welcome to the third lecture of optical sensors course. On the previous two lectures, we discussed the basics of sensors and biosensors and what are the components and uh, what are the performance parameters. I mean, before we start to make any sensor, we must know what are the ways to make a sensor and what are the things we have to take care of. So, for example, I told you about the sensitivity, uh, detection accuracy, uh, limit of detection, response time, all these parameters you have to take care of when you uh, are really concerned about sensor. Now, when we go to optical sensors, we have to understand that what is optics, what are basically these waves or rays or particles, we will see. And, uh, what are the their basic fundamental properties which can be modulated and can be used for making a sensor. So, from now onwards we will study the basic optics and use it for optical sensing. So, today we are going to discuss uh, electromagnetic waves in free space and pointing vector. Here we will see that uh, as I told you that the light basically is an electromagnetic wave. So, if I have an electromagnetic wave, how it propagates through a medium, how it propagates through free space and what will be the direction of flow of energy, will it be a transverse wave or longitudinal, we will see all these things. The electromagnetic spectrum that is very broad spectrum it starts from gamma rays to long waves and here a very small patch of it say only about 300 to 350 nanometers that is called visible spectrum. So, if you are talking about optical sensors, we will be essentially talking about uh, this range plus little bit of extension say from wallet set to say an IR or maybe IR up to maximum IR, infrared, red and infrared, not more than that. So, we are talking about this, this is small patch of uh, the electromagnetic spectrum. So, here are Maxwell's four equations, del dot d is equal to rho external, del dot b is equal to 0, del cross e is equal to minus del b by del t and del cross h is equal to j external plus del d by del t. These four relations rely on two constitutive relations, which are d is equal to epsilon naught e plus p, which you can write epsilon e and b is equal to mu h, where I have written down what every term means. So, basically this is displacement vector. So, I, I, I assume that you know what is, what is this operator delta. Yeah? this is vector operator. Those who have not yet studied, I think they should go and read it first or make a course on that first. From here, you can see that these relations are two from electricity and two from magnetism and this one was somehow connecting electricity and magnetism and here there was a missing gap which Maxwell fixed. So, what he said that a changing mag magnetic field produces electric field and changing electric field produces magnetic field and this keeps on changing only at a particular speed, it is called the speed of light, but we will see. So, these are the constants, epsilon naught is the permittivity of the free space mu naught is the permeability of the free space and c is the speed of light. If you multiply these two epsilon naught and mu naught here, yeah, 4 pi 4 pi terms cancel out and 2 power 7 cancels out and you, you are left with 1 by c square. Now, suppose I take a medium where j external and rho external are 0, then we can rewrite the Maxwell's equations in these forms where I have assumed that mu is essentially equal to mu naught. 
because most of the materials they are less responsive to the magnetic field and uh, more responsive to the electric field. So, when we talk about optical materials they are mostly responsive to electric field. So, there is the role of epsilon, but, but mu naught mu is almost equal to mu naught. So, that is why we do not. So, why it happens? So, we will discuss it why is the effect of magnetic field negligible we will see, but for now we move ahead with these equations and try to solve them to find a wave which propagates in the medium or in vacuum. So, take curl of the equation third a you will end up with this curl of curl of E is equal to curl of minus del B by del T. You change the order of differentiation first you differentiate and then take the derivative you end up with this from equation fourth a you can put this directly here. Okay, so, equation 4 was del cross h was epsilon del E by del T and when you have del cross B it will become mu naught epsilon del E by del T. Okay. So, from there we end up with this relation you can sub simply substitute for this and we end up here. So, del cross del cross E is equal to minus del by del T mu epsilon del E by del T. So, that will essentially become del 2 E by del T square. Now, we use an identity that is A cross B cross C is equal to B A C minus C A B back minus cab this is a very useful rule and I suggest that you go home and prove it that it is true. Okay. So, you simply use, simply use uh, uh, vector calculus to prove it. So, if you apply the same identity here what we get here is del cross del cross E is equal to del of del dot E minus del 2 E. Okay. Hence, this equation becomes this, but we know that del dot d is equal to 0 that is why we went end up with this r is equal to this. So, we know that mu naught epsilon naught is equal to 1 by c square that is the speed of light it, it becomes a material medium like mu naught epsilon it becomes 1 by v square v is the speed of. So, v v is speed of the wave wave speed of the wave. So, this relation is called a wave equation and if you solve for it similarly for magnetic field you will end up with this. So, I leave it to you for homework you go home and you solve similarly for magnetic field you take the curl of the fourth equation substitute for the second one and you find out this. So, if you want to have a solution of this you will have plane wave solutions like E is equal to E 0 i k x minus omega t or B is equal to this thing. Okay. So, if you have this equation these are not completely free. I mean now E and B, E 0 and B 0 they must satisfy Maxwell's equations. So, let us see what happens. So, if you have E is equal to E 0 e to power i k x minus omega t y x and let us say we are considering it a one dimensional case. So, if you write a one dimensional case, so if you write a one dimensional one dimensional case of the wave equation that will be. So, wave equation was I mean 3 d 3 d it was del 2 e is equal to 1 by v square del 2 e by del t square. Now, if you take 1 d case it will become d 2 x d 2 e by 
dx square delta e by dx square equal to 1 by v square delta e by delta e square. I mean it has to be partial derivative. Now, if I have e is equal to e 0 e to power i k x minus omega t and I want to solve it. Yeah. What do I do? Take a derivative of it. Derivative derivative with respect to x will lead you del e by del x is equal to uh, e naught e to power i k x minus omega t into i k del 2 e by del d x square will be will be e 0 e to power i k x minus omega t into i k square. So, have this two term this thing. So, you can replace it with e. So, it essentially leaves you del 2 e by del x square is equal to um, minus k square i square is i square is equal to minus 1. So, minus k square e that is what you get. Now, let us take derivative with respect to t derivative with respect to t. So, from here we know that del e, e by del x del x is equal to i k e. So, del by del x is equal to i k from here I know. From here we know that del e by del t is equal to similarly del 2 e by del t square is equal to minus omega square And you can say that del by del t is equal to i omega minus i omega. So, if you want to solve for the Maxwell's equations, so what happens actually that del dot e is equal to 0 means k dot e is equal to 0. So, del was equal to i k. So, del dot e is equal to 0 means k i into k dot e is equal to 0. This implies k dot e is equal to 0. Similarly, for, from here you can say that k dot b is equal to 0. What does it mean? It means that e and k are perpendicular. If e is here, k is here. Similarly, k and b are perpendicular to each other. Okay. Why we choose k x minus omega t kind of solution? Because we want to describe a wave travelling in positive x direction, what it seems. So, if you shift x by a, the origin of the function moves to x minus a. Okay. So, it was here, now it became here. So, if you take a is equal to v t, a is the distance, v is the velocity of the wave and t is the time taken for by it to move to a. So, we get the wave propagation in positive x direction. In our case, we have i k x minus c t y c because we are considering the wave in free space. So, that is why we are having here. Also, you can see that if you have e is equal to e 0 e power k x minus omega t, you can have and uh, you have from here uh, the previous one 
from here you have omega is equal to c k, how do you achieve, achieve arrive here. So, what you do is that you put in this relation from here. So, you get del 2 e by del x square equal to 1 by c square into del 2 e by del t square. Now, you put it you get k square minus k square is equal to minus omega square by c v square actually v square. So, k square was equal to omega square by v square. So, k is equal to omega by v. If medium is free space I mean the wave is travelling in free space then v is equal to c. So, k is equal to omega by c. So, I arrive here. So, we see from here that it is a wave which is travelling in positive x direction if it was a positive if it was positive say k x plus omega t then it will be a wave which is travelling in minus x direction because when time is increasing because it is a plane wave it has to be fixed this phase plane wave means phase has to be constant phase is equal to constant throughout the plane. Now, if t is increasing then x changes in way changes such that k x plus minus omega t is equal to constant. So, if t is increasing then this term is increasing for if it is a if it is plus then x has to decrease. So, x is going in other direction so that it nullifies the effect. If this is minus sign if t is increasing then x will be increasing. So, it is going in the power positive x direction that is how you say if the wave is going in plus or x minus direction. If you put uh, this e is equal to e 0 e to power i k x minus omega t this in this equation you end up with this relation and the fourth equation you end up with this relation. What these two say? This to say that E and B are perpendicular to each other. So, from here it seems that E is perpendicular to B and perpendicular to K. So, they are all mutually orthogonal triads. So, you can see that if the wave is propagating in this direction, the electric field is in this direction, magnetic field is in this direction and then all these angles are 90 degree, all, all of them are 90 degree. It is like this, wave is propagating in this direction, electric field is in this direction and magnetic field in this direction. So, they are all and the electric and magnetic fields are in phase, they are not in out of phase. So, it is not like they are out of phase, they are in phase all the time. And this is a transverse wave. Why transverse? Because they are all perpendicular to one another. And from here we have seen that k cross e is equal to omega b and omega is equal to c k. So, you end up with this relation mod e is equal to c times b. So, if you say b, b is equal to essentially e by c magnitude, magnitude of b is equal to magnitude of electric field by c. You solve for it b is equal to h is equal to b by mu 0, you can write it like c by e by c mu 0 and this is essentially z 0, z 0 is defined is equal to under root mu naught over epsilon naught. It is called the impedance of the vacuum, if you have mu by epsilon then it is the impedance of the medium which is impedance is like the resistance offered by the medium when the wave is propagating through it. Okay. So, from here till now we have demonstrated that this is a wave which is transverse in nature because 
the electric field oscillations or magnetic field oscillations are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. Now, I come to the point why the effect of magnetic field is negligible. So, if you put a so suppose I have a charged particle, you know this Lorentz force on it due to electrical and magnetic forces components it is q e into q v cross b. So, if I take the ratio of the magnitude of the electric and magnetic forces, we end up with this thing. And since b is equal to e by c, we see that the contribution of magnetic force to electric force is like v by c. And if the velocity of the charge is much smaller than the speed of light, then we can neglect its magnetic force as compared to the electric force. Okay. That is why most of the materials in optic, optical materials, they are responsive to the change in electric field, but not to the magnetic field. All right. Now, we want to see what is the direction of flow of the energy and that is given by pointing vector. So, pointing vector is defined by S is equal to E cross H. So, the direction of flow of energy in an electromagnetic wave is defined by E cross H. may be it may be pointing in the direction of the wave vector may not be even. In case of double refraction you have uh, ordinary and extraordinary rays and uh, for extraordinary rays in most of the cases the direction of the propagation vector does not align to the direction of the uh, s vector. So, there is some specific case, but for most of the cases for example, this uh, case of uh, uh, simple reflection and refraction uh, the wave vector aligns to the pointing vector that uh, we will see when we solve the refraction problem. I, I guess you know that uh, laws of refraction that if a wave comes from n 1 to n 2 and n 1 greater than n 2 then what happens actually is that it comes towards the normal you know that what happens to the direction of flow of energy that consideration should be taken. So, we will see that. So, if the wave is propagating in, in this direction the in ideal case it will be the same as the direction of so the direction of flow of energy will be the same as the direction of propagation of the wave. So, using this relation which we derived earlier we come to the point that is E square by Z naught. So, S is in watt per meter square that gives you the pointing vector. Pointing vector tells us that energy is flowing in the direction of the wave, uh, direction of propagation of the wave that is the wave vector k and the energy flow density is E square by Z naught. So, if we average over time you get by a factor of half because you have uh, a cos term and it is a cos square term which comes out to be 1 by 2. So, average energy flow density of E m waves in free space is E naught square by 2 z naught. So, to summarize this talk starting from Maxwell's equations we deduce the wave equation and showed that it is transverse in nature. Energy of the wave flows in the direction of the pointing vector. Thank you.